Sheriff Gonzalez, good to be able to see you again. Thanks for getting a chance to come by the office so we can get a chance to be able to visit. Thank uh, you. I know you had multiple questions on this in the past. We also understand you are not currently at ICE, uh, and we understand that. There are some policies that are currently happening at ICE uh, that you are not responsible for, but you're walking into a situation. So let me ask just a couple of questions. Have you visited with the National ICE Council, any of the leadership there, or will you commit to get a chance to be able to sit and hear from them so you'll get feedback from the field of what's occurring? Uh, Senator, I have not met with them. If confirmed, I would look forward to working with them. Be great. Uh, obviously, they can give you some face-to-face -face stories of what's actually happening uh, in the field right now that I think would be very helpful. So uh, I'm going to give you a situation and, and then tell you where our frustration is coming from. This is a story that came out. A person was arrested for sexual battery against a child. ICE officers requested permission of management to make an arrest, but management denied the officer's request, even though this was sexual battery against a child. Second story. This was a person that had been deported two times previously, a person that had a pending local charge for distribution of heroin, two counts of aggravated assault, endangerment of a child, endangerment of an elder adult, failed, failed to stop at a command of police. The person appeared at a designated location with a quarter pound of heroin and attempted to sell to an undercover police officer. Realized what was happening, he attempted to ram the police vehicle with his car and almost hit the undercover officer that he knew was an officer. That person had a woman and a baby in the back seat of their car during the heroin sale. ICE declined to lodge the detainer on that individual. As I've mentioned to you before, the current policy is they cannot make an arrest without reaching out to regional leadership. This was one of those situations where they requested a regional leadership and were denied the ability to be able to make those arrests in both those. Sexual battery against a child, assaults on a police officer, and distribution of heroin. What do you think about those? I know you haven't seen the full case on this, but those don't look hard and complicated to me why we shouldn't put a detainer there or start the process. Senator, for me, those fact patterns are concerning uh, to me. I can identify several serious public safety concerns. Uh, if confirmed, I would want to have more information on those uh, particular cases and then also understand from the local field directors uh, regional directors on, on why those decisions were made not to pursue enforcement action. It seems to me that uh, on those fact patterns that it would have been appropriate. I haven't seen anything in the guidance that would preclude that from happening. But again, I would want to understand more specifics about what happened and why. So in the, thank you for that. Uh, I would hope for that. In the, in the past, ICE, when they've gone to be able to make an arrest of an individual, uh, they were aware that it was a criminal alien, met the criteria there when they arrived. If they happen to be with three other people, two other people, one other person that was not legally present in the United States, those individuals were also detained as well. Should that be continued as a policy? Or should it only be literally if you encounter four people that are in this place that are not legally present, you only actually detain the one person and the others you just ignore? Senator, for me, again, I think it's a matter of prioritization. I think that um, with any agency that has limited resources, manpower, and other considerations. I think that we it's appropriate to have priorities. Uh, I think we could always assess if those are effective. It doesn't preclude any of the others from still uh, being potentially up for enforcement uh, removal. Uh, but again, I think that I, I would trust that our personnel on the field could make those judgment decisions. Uh, look at the totality of circumstances and see if it's a good use of resources because it is a matter of trade-off. If we are pursuing uh, multiple individuals in, in, in the scenario that you gave, then there's others that perhaps we're not focusing on. So I think that we should be strategic and, and, um, and, and smart in our enforcement. Effort. I understand. L last uh, May, because we've not been able to get from ICE the statistics for June, we have 6,000 ICE agents in the field and they did 3,000 deportations mm -hmm. in a month. Um, it is a record low for them. So clearly they're not overworked at this point. In fact, the ICE agents that we interact with are pretty frustrated saying that they're the ones being handcuffed currently, not able to actually do law enforcement, or they're being told by regional leadership, no, that doesn't meet the standard. You need to stand down, even though you know this person has multiple DUIs, sexual battery of a child, assault on a police officer, whatever it may be, they're, they're requesting to be able to go and actually interdict and they're being told, no, they cannot do that. So the challenge is, obviously that sends a signal to people that are here that are not legally present that ICE is really not going to enforce the law. 
Um, and as you mentioned earlier in your testimony, if someone is not legally present here, they're not legally present here. Uh, this has been part of the challenge to be able to say, who do we actually engage? So I'm not asking to go pursue and to go door to door through neighborhoods. I'm saying if an individual is found to not be legally present, they are a criminal alien that is in that we are in pursuit of and actually go interdict. They're also with another person that we clearly not legally present. Do we ignore one and, and not pick up the other one or and pick up the other one? Yes. Again, Senator, I think that it's important for us to be strategic and be thoughtful in our enforcement. I think it's important. I think at the end of the day, just making arbitrary decisions like that, that that everyone um, that's often referred to as collateral uh, poses a serious threat. I think we run the risk sometimes of perhaps taking someone that may be a business owner, that may be uh, some, and I'm not saying that that preclude, you know, that there's it, their hands off, but what I'm saying, I think it's a matter of looking at the totality of right. circumstances. I, 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 I just, I just believe that a, a prioritized approach is, 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 is reasonable. Sure, I, I understand a prioritized approach. Uh, I'm not talking about, again, going doing massive sweeps. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where this is going uh, because if, if, again, we know someone is not following the law and we just ignore it, then we have a law that we're not applying at all. And uh, that's obviously you know what that does. That leads to more criminal activity as you go and trying to be able to figure out how to be able to interdict that in the future. Okay, we'll continue to be able to do follow-up. Thank you, Sheriff. Thanks.